All right, all right, we have welcome everybody, welcome into another mighty video slash mighty live again. Yeah, my second live on the day. Um, I'm honestly not expecting a lot of people to show up because it's later into the day. People are usually done with day trading. Um, you know, they don't want to talk about it. They don't want to hear anything related to day trading. Um, but um, that's not me. Mighty never rests. And Mighty is about to get done some study session. Um, because this is how we roll and this is how we do it here in the Mighty channel. Today I'm going to show you my entire live trading archives on the day. This is not a recap. This is not a you know live trading session because obviously the markets are closed. But this is a me. study session. Mighty study session. What are we saying? Okay. So um, if you guys join, um, you know, hopefully you guys can learn something out of this recap. Um, I'm going to have the chat, up, the chat up here on the side monitor in case you have any questions along the way. Um, but, um, you know, this is this is going to be a study session. It's not really, you know, usually the, the, the live streams I do in the morning, not in the morning, but power hour, those are more fun. I have a lot of people on. We're having like, we're, we're having like, you know, fun with the chat interacting, playing games, all that stuff. This is a serious one because um, this is going to be a normal video that's going to stay in my YouTube channel. And hopefully, you know, the idea on this on this um, video is that I can create a game plan for tomorrow and I can go back to my recording and see what, I, for me, see what went wrong and see what I can improve upon for tomorrow. I can see what strategies work the best, which type of market we're in, you know, which setups I need to avoid. And, um, you know, hopefully along the way, as you see a profitable trader study, as you see how a profitable day trader, day trader trades, hopefully you guys can learn something along the way just by, you know, taking a look. So um, this is what we're going to do. My PNL, so just so you guys can get oriented, my PNL is over here. This is my PNL on the day. Uh, this is one minute chart one minute chart one minute chart this is the level two for this one minute chart this is the order entry window for this one minute chart same here and same here there's the clock and um yeah let's get to it so a little bit of a disclaimer remember my results are not typical so please make sure you guys trade a simulator before you put your hard earned money on the line okay i turned the corner in the simulator so there's no excuse why you guys shouldn't be trading in the simulator all right please leave a like and um, let's get that. I mean, this is a video that you guys really don't need to be live here because I'm going to upload this as a normal video anyway. So you can go back to the recording and see, you know, the price action, see the level two, see my trade, see everything. But the good thing about you being live here is that you can ask me questions um, about, you know, this specific stock right here, right now, or this specific setup right here, right now. As I said, I had my chat up not many people are probably going to join because it's again later so i guess better for you all your questions will be answered but let's take a look here okay so bwb was the one that was you know surging up at the open and this one i believe was our leading gapper and you know was the one that gave the nicest cleanest move out of the open bbby was the same thing um you know gave a little bit of a gap and go but it was tricky it trapped a lot of people first you know first it looked like it was going to fade and fail it didn't then it trapped a lot of short sellers long bias jumped in for the first one minute counter make it high this thing absolutely rips to 30. but again that's just kind of like so you can get your bearings again this is not going to be a recap just me going over my trades all right so let's see if we can find some trades sitting up 152 on the day and um I can go back before the market started. Oh yeah, I need to show you guys that gap and go. I need to show you guys that trade I took with my Lightspeed account. Wait a sec. Well, let's see. Um. Okay, so look at this trade. So the trade is a a couple of things. First, you got to find a stock that's very strong, usually the leading gapper. You need to like the price range. You need to like the float, you know, kind of like 
in order for you to take a trade in the morning, especially in the first minute of the open, everything needs to align. And everything aligned here today for me on VWB, which gave me the courage of buying 3,000 shares right at the open here. As soon as the market opened, this was the leading gapper. We were just underneath this um, pre-market pivot, and I thought that we were going to open and rip through it, and that's exactly what happened. So 3,000 shares at the ready. Let's see this trade. Watch the clock, two seconds to the open. Right now I'm trading on my Lightspeed account as Tinkersim lags at the open. Watching, there's a break of 60. That's what I wanted to see as confirmation. Jumped in, 3,000 shares. Jumped in around 60 and I'm out around 70. 10 cent winner, 3,000 shares. You know, and I missed some trades here. Some trades are going to come. My question is um, when you have a resistance level pre-market and at the open you have a setup below below the resistance level, would the pre-market resistance still be considered resistance with much higher with with much higher volume of the setup of the open? Yeah, you know any important levels that you see pre-market are always going to be considered as resistance even at the open, even in the next day. Let's say let's say today we didn't break this pre-market high of, of 362 and this stock consolidated all the way till tomorrow even tomorrow this 362 level will still be a level of resistance that you always need to be aware of why type um, what type of order why type of order was limit not market because um i don't know on the open i really don't feel don't, don't think feel comfortable tracking market orders because they can be a little bit too crazy but um you know, usually during the day, I don't care, and I use market orders with Think or Swim. But at the open specifically, I rather use limit orders, which is what I did with Lightspeed. But anyway, so we have this search up. Then the next setup I missed was the continuation break. So we broke, we held high, 380, 82, 84, 85. Right now it's pulling away. I can't jump in. 89.90. Mm, so what's you know what what comes what comes to my mind now is break of four. So, man, I should have taken trades in my Lightspeed account. I was too afraid to give this three hundred dollars back, and I just didn't, just didn't trade. But let's see that where where I should have jumped jumped in for the break of four or the break of three ninety rather. Three ninety. Well, it switched level two as I closed my Lightspeed, and I'm like, all right, I'm done with Lightspeed. 391 over 391. So right now, I mean, this is what I don't want to be doing here. Just starting to test if my Tinker Swim is working or if it's lagging. This is what I got my live speed for. I shouldn't be testing shit here. Sorry for my language. I should be trading with my live speed account the first three minutes and then just jump right, right into my Tinker Swim account with the same size. But right now, I'm testing with 50 shares. Buy, sell, buy, sell. Is this going to work? Yes or no? Okay, here's the break of four, here it comes. And I'm still fooling around with 50 shares and I missed the straight. Watch the break of 40. There's the long, clear as day. Clear as day, 10 cents. And then I take a quick scalp, finally. Let's see that trade. That was a bit of a tricky trade. I jump in at 416 because we ripped through 410. And then 410 held, and I jumped in 3,000 shares for a, for, a, for a tiny win, honestly. Um, you know, coming out with a bad feel there. Let's see that again. You know, something I also want to be doing is trading less so that I can go deeper into my studying with my trades. Also, so that I don't get bothered by TD about the um, 390 order bullshit. Man, I got to stop costing. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, you know, hmm. There's a long there for the break of 10. Nice rip. I jumped in, kind of like chased it. Got a bad feel coming out. Um, okay. What type of order? Um, a limit order with offset. Yeah, that's what I use. I used, at the open, I used a limit order with an offset. Um, near the breakout, 
Are you focusing on the ask or the bid? Ask on the breakout, bid on the dips. 41, look at that, it's opening up. 50, break of 50. Right now, break of 50 really doesn't give an entry for me. At least know that I can see because it just literally just skipped 50. There was not like a clear resistance at 50, a little bit of a micro pullback and then rip through it. Then kind of like I, that was a bad trade. We laugh, Rock, we laugh. But this is study time with Mighty. You know, um, study time. I'm just going to be, this is not going to be a, um, you know, kind of like similar to the live streams we do in the, in the power hour. This is just going to be me studying my live trading archives. And, you know, if people want to be spectators, they're welcome. And if they want to ask questions about the, the stuff they're seeing, they're welcome to do so as well. All right. So we're hitting their daily resistance. 471, which is obvious. Hmm. Let's see. Any other big trades? I kind of botched the, the break of 458. It was a nice trade that I screwed up. Oh. And, um, uh, it looks like I took some trades on ear. Oh, unfortunately, I don't have the chart. This chart is wrong. This is clearly not ear. I need to fix that. Yeah, Mark, I'm sorry. <laughs> yep, never again. Especially when something's ripping. All right. <sighs> God damn it. Okay, let me pull up my, my Tinko Sim charts. The bad thing about being live is that I can't just pause the video and then do my own thing and then come back like nothing happened. Now I have to sit tight for a little. Okay, let me pull up my charts just so, so that I can have better bearings on, on what was happening with them. Um, with um with ears you know i want to trade less because i f i truly feel like if i want to scale up share size i need to start getting rid of all the nonsense trades i make you know because 50 50 percent maybe like 40 percent of my trades are just me taking stabs at anything and if i'm able to get rid of those if I'm able to increase my accuracy and just and just take the big trades like kind of like at the open, those one I can really increase my shares even more. As I'm struggling to sign in, Jesus Christ! All right, hold on, hold on tight. Recap. Okay, let's. See. Okay, I'm back. Let's see what's happening on ear. Ear, ear, ear. I was trading it right at the open. This was on my watch list in the morning because um, it was a leading gapper, one of the leading gappers, and um, I believe I started trading it right here during this range couple of setups first the first thing that comes to mind break of high of day 256 then break of this pre-market pivot 265 then the break of high of day not high of day the break of pre-market highs and then you know this is kind of like the chart um that's kind of like what happened and um okay this is the chart we're working with this zone this zone okay let's see so the first trade i take a couple of nice big trades to start off right off the bat 
Let's see. I want to see the first trade. These are the trades that I want to really focus on. All right, 257. And this is at 936. So right here. This one minute pullback. Okay, let's see the price action. 57. 57. 37 with that candle. If I jump in for a 57 break, it breaks. Four cents scalp in out. 65, there's some big sellers. Uh, that's the th and here's the thing. Why am I selling too quickly? Sometimes at the beginning, I really don't have confidence in any stock. That's why I really at first want to be quick to take my profits. But there, I had a nice entry on this one minute pullback. Sold like for five cents and then missed the true push through high of day. 37. We're there. 69. Now I want to see if this one's go crazy. Now my next level is high of day, which was 72. Over 72. Let's see if I take a trade. Can we trade here, please? Hello. Okay, I'm back two years. I jumped in for the break of high of day. Long at 72, which was the high right here. No, right here. Out on the other side. And then the next level in mind is 80. I'm, 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 I'm okay with these trades. Yes, maybe I should hold for longer, but I don't have a cushion on the day. So we find 80, 80. That's a nice trade. Why? And this is a trade that I could take with 6,000 shares. For sure. Because it's at the open. This thing is liquid as hell. But because I know that I'm going to trade forever all day, I'm like, Okay, if I take a big loss with the 6,000 shares, I'm not going to be able to make it back with smaller size when I take big quality setup. So I kind of like cap my share size to the share size I can use on every setup. Let's see. 1K minimum. Yep, 1K minimum. Yeah, increasing accuracy is so difficult. I've been trying every day, keeping that in mind. Yeah, accuracy, accuracy, accuracy. Increasing accuracy for sure. And it doesn't need to be 70, it doesn't need to be 80, it doesn't even need to be 65. As long as it's around 57, 62, I think that's a good spot. And, um, you know, right now I'm, I'm at 50, which, you know, for taking like 100 trades in one day, 50, being right in 50 trades, it's not terrible, I guess. But, you know, it's not ideal either. You know, and the guy having the guy I have in mind is Ross. Because I obviously wanna be like Ross. He's he's like the best small cap trader I know. Um yeah, that's a great goal. So the reason I say that is, go, is Ross has around sixty to sixty two percent accuracy. And he's taking giant size in these trades. Um That's a good goal, Rockling, but then at the same time your profit or loss ratio might be might be hurt because I see that you right now are trying to take like trying to trade kind of like me and RT, which is like quick break or bail trades, break or bail breakouts, and being able to be that accurate on setups that work immediately is gonna be so hard. If you're willing to give setups room to work, then I can see how your accuracy can be like that. But with the, you know, trying to have 70% accuracy on trades that work immediately, I feel like that's going to be harder because, you know, why, why that was a quality setup? Because, you know, break of pre-market highs is classic. Everybody knows it. We are just, you know, with the high volume of the open, um, you know, this is obvious. Better than, better to say quality, this is obvious. WB mighty. 
Billy B. Mighty, how did last week work for you today? Good. Joseph, I had a nice gap and go trade. If you go back on this live stream, I just went over that trade at the open and I finished 300 bucks green on light speed. Now I'm going over the rest. Okay, so I'm green there. What was that trade? Where we are now? We're at 40. So we're ha we're here. We just broke pre-market highs. The new high of day is 86. Now the next level I have in mind is 86. Taking some stabs, some scratch straights there. By the dip to 71. For the love of God, is a dip gonna ever work? I'm up a couple cents there, sell half, finally a nice dip. Where was this dip? I wanna see that again. You know, because buying the dips while the stock is pushing hard, that's when you wanna be buying the dips. Um, so the dip was at 41. Was it this candle? Low 81, it was this candle. Low 70, so it wasn't this candle? Yep, it wasn't that candle. I buy the dip on this candle, 40. I'm like, okay, we're holding, pre we're holding previous high day. As you can probably notice, I reduced size for the dips. I'm not as comfortable with the dips. This dip, I could have easily taken with 6,000 shares again. It's a nice dip, it works out. My favor, high of day, 86. Big bid right there. It should have been an instant buy. We need to break over 80. So I go along. We break over 80. Oh man, Marcelo. Ho oh, ho, that's a nice trade. I probably didn't notice that trade that bid. Man. Look at that bid. So this is how you trade big bids. The bid shows up and you instantly buy that crap. And then, you know, your stop is selling back to that big bit. So I jump in. So right now, I didn't know that there was a big bit. I probably missed it. And then what happened here is I went long for 280. 280 broke out. And then you see that? It broke out by 2 cents, but then it went all the way back down to 280 again. Nice, Rockling. Um, it came quickly. It, it came quickly back to 280 again. So I'm like, you know, kind of like, oh, false breakout vibe. So I quickly stop out. Sure enough, it was the true breakout. And I missed 10 cents. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Right now we're at 941. 41. 90. Ah. And, and that, the, the exact same thing happened again. Breaks out by 1 cent. Doesn't give me the confidence to hold it. But, um, yeah. But it's like, how do you know when the stock is going to continue to go higher? Like this much higher. This is like why I just keep taking my profits as soon as I get them. Because how do you know the stock is going to continue to go another 10 cents? How? <laughs> On the other hand, when I get quick profit, I can see on the level two that that's kind of like the wave of profit. And as I see coming down, I just don't have the confidence to to think, okay, it's going to come down, hold up somewhere, and then continue to go another 10 cents. Because the truth is that I should be able to hold for longer. So there were some trades on that. And do I switch up? Nope. Let's see. That's fine, fine. And now I'm just churning shares. What time is it? 9.44. So right now I'm trying to ch trade this consolidation right here. Get a nice break of three. Let's see that. 3,098. I punched at 94 because um, we were consolidating just under three. We're chopping around that, uh, you know, under three. So I'm like, all right, let's go through three. I sell at 99. 
which was a mistake. But on my 799, just because, I don't know, I came in with the mindset of we might see some resistance here and it might take a couple of taps before we actually break. Shouldn't have sold. I quickly rec recognized that we were breaking. Tell me, tell me I, buy, I bought again. No, that's 3,000 shares. Uh, that was that was a spot that I should have held from 94. Added a three, added a three again, and then sell on the other side. Because it's as clear as day. Look at this breakout. Look at this breakout. Giant sellers. 37,000, 25,000, 25,000, 7,000, 2,000, 1,000. But look at the green that's coming in. And look at those sellers getting eaten. Here, Marcelo should have been slamming the buy button. Buy the dip for the hold. It's a nice trade. That was a money trade. Let's see that again. Okay, Marcelo, nice. That was nice. So the rip through three. And it's holding, the bits is holding, 98, 99, 3, held. I'm in. Target is the break of 310. Ah. 306, 304 exit, come on. Nah, that is some robbery right there. Now, nah, come on. Let's see some long there. Let's see, where do I sell? I saw right there. How do I know that? Because there's the sell order, me bailing out. 306 at least. You know, I get filled at 304. Come on, man. Well, that should have been a nicer trade. Still nice nonetheless. And now, you know, the first couple of setups are my sweet spot. The first couple of setups in the first when the when the Lego momentum first starts. I think you know when to exit. Um, favorite hands, <laughs> yeah, guys, favorite hands. I think you know uh, when to exit when you see sellers started to pile on a specific price. Yeah, yeah, and that's what I'm doing. I'm exiting the moment I see something I don't like. But then, how do you know? You know, because the people like Ross. They are seeing the exact same thing I'm seeing, but for some reason they continue to hold. Okay, they continue to maybe even add their confidence on the on stock. I guess I just I'm just no I'm not I'm not that confident in, in stocks because I don't know I I trade more than more than Ross and I trade I guess my standard in A quality is lower when it comes to stocks, not even set up stocks. Because I could have five stocks in my watch list and Ross doesn't like any of them. Maybe he likes just one. And, um, and, um, you know, maybe, maybe because he has better equality standards on the stock, he's more confident to hold the stock. Okay, where are we? 46. 46, right here now. 46 on that red candle right there. Do I attempt the dip? 12. You know, I should be increasing my share size. I should be more aggressive in the open. Use bigger share size in the open, specifically in those setups that you see are the first, second, you know, clean entry on the first leg of, of the momentum or something. What the fuck? Bigger share size when there's high volume in SS trades. In SS trades, case I like to play as a damage at the open. My notes to myself. All right, so here, look at this, man. Up a thousand bucks in the first like twenty minutes of the open. Ay ay ay. The break of three was not super clean. Yeah. 
but it was still a break though. Like, I liked it. Um, I got in for the break of three and got out when it went to like ninety eight. Ha <laughs> ha. Uh, just to watch it go without me after. Yeah, it's tricky when they do that, but um, it's not uncommon either. So you know, for me, holding a level is now. You know, if if it could even be holding ninety seven, and if it's holding ninety seven. That's like good enough to say that's holding three. Although it's not. It's holding 97. But it's close enough. Uh, what do you think of George trading and and him using MACD? Um, George. For anybody that doesn't know, George is a, a, a good trader in the wire chat room community. Um, I don't follow him very closely because I believe that he trades mostly pre-market. And he's already up 10,000 when I'm waking up. <laughs> So I'm like, it's kind of hard to relate. Um, I don't, I don't even know how he trades. I just know that he do, does well. He uses the MACD. No comments about that. I, I mean, I think the MACD is a, is something that Ross is gonna drop eventually. I mean, what's the difference between trading a stock that's you know trending up? You know, you can put a twenty s a twenty EMA. On the stock, and if the stock is over it, the MACD is probably green and extended. And if the stock is below it, then that's the backside. I mean, you know, and sometimes curls that you know initiate a short squeeze can happen, and the MACD will be sleeping. So it's like I don't know. Jorge, <laughs> not George. <laughs> Sorry, Jorge, Jorge. Oh, that's hilarious. By the way, anybody just tuning in, this is not a recap. This is just some raw live trading, some commentary. This is just me studying. This is just what I usually do. But now, since everybody wants to see my live trading, it's like, and and I like this streaming thing. I might as well just study. Instead of studying just in my head, I study out loud. And if you guys can learn something from watching a profitable trader study their own um, their own trades, you know, that's even better. If you have any questions, again, the, the good part about being live here right now is that you can ask me anything and I'll answer along the way. But then this is meant to be a video that stays for people that, you know, a year from now can check how to how to trade penny stocks. Uh, okay. Let's continue, continue. Where are we now? 48 right here okay so support zone is around 240 294 so I bite the dip like a brave man I'm in the dip everybody I'm gonna help the cause no nope, I'm out and it's, it's good that I'm buying dips I'm you know I'm getting flushed on everywhere <laughs> but it's good that I'm buying dips so continue to buy dips in the first leg of momentum, continue buy micro dips in the first push of momentum, the first leg of momentum. Micro dips, they dips a support, maybe smaller size, just because it might flush. But, um, and then those kind of like tiny micro pullbacks that you can get on the level two on the first push that means some money. Or como que el overshoot de la misma candle, como que hace una mini, hay una red candle y tiene un low, el overshoot de eso también, y como que un quick long. Sorry for the Spanglish. You do a good job, man. Thanks, A-A-A-J, A-J. Mighty, J. Yeah, this way better than just posting a recap video. Hitting the beat. <laughs> Hitting the beat. Yep, calcium. Hitting the beat. Yeah, this is a new format, so. You know, because I, hopefully this is more helpful than a recap. Ninety-seven, fifty-one. So I guess I'm still trying to buy support on this thing. As I see that's tapping, tapping support multiple times. Estoy de acuerdo. Nice, guys. How long have you been trading? Um, almost three years. 2.9 years. 
I don't know. Almost three years. Yep. Yep. It's a great Discord. We laugh, Mobile. We laugh. And I'm getting too distracted. Okay. Um. So I get some profit back. But this is a nice, you know, this is some nice trades right here. These are some nice trades that I could have taken with double share size. I will be up 1600 on the day. That's a nice day with some clean trades that I can go back and study instead of over trading all day. You know? Now it looks like, oh man, this is nice. Oh boy. Let's take a look at this. BBBY. I get aggressive on this. But it was the right move. This is a nice trade too. 16, 1600 here. 400 on BBB on, on BBBY, $2,000 a day in, in not even 30 minutes. Those are nice days. Those are nice days that I can go study back and increase even my shares as even more. You know, I, and I finished up up a thousand on a day, counting my life speed. So, not ideal. Look at this. Look at this. Mighty got loose. Ay, ay, ay. 4,000 shares. Look at that seller. But look at this. You don't mess up with Mighty. Mighty is a big seller. I'm going to help buying that guy up. You shall see. 20,000 shares. No, not 20,000. That's 190,000. 190,000 shares. It was 200,000 shares at first. 190,000 shares. 180,000 shares. Look at the bids though. We came in. This is not a trade. This is a movement. We came in. The bulls were stepping up. You know, some big boys were stepping in. All right. We're going to squeeze, squeeze these people out. And I'm like, you know what? Mighty wants to help. Watch. Long, long. 6,000. I did my part. Once and break up. Watch again. I'm going to help again. Even, even better. Long, 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 long. 12,000 shares. 12,000 shares from 59 to 62. That would do it. Um, what is that? Three cents? This is the trade that I bought that I really want to dial in. How could I How could I have traded this better? It's a revolution of the bulls, exactly. So, how could I have traded this better? I, ah, I screwed up this one. I'm, I'm pissed off about BWB right here. What is your offset on those limit orders? Because market is so volatile in those breakouts. There's no limit orders. I'm using, on Tinkushim, I'm using market orders. And you know, the limit and the safety net is knowing that there's a big buyer I'm buying off of. If there wasn't a big buyer, I wouldn't just slam the buy button like that. Because kind of like the, knowing that there's a big seller there, and just by seeing that I know that my market orders, my market orders will not get filled super high. And like, I'm not gonna, I'm, I'm buying from, from that seller. So, you know, I wouldn't recommend use market, market orders if you don't know what you're doing. It would be better to use a limit with an offset, but, um, do I think we're back in a bull market? No, but I think we are in a less cold market and to put it in chart, in chart terms, I think we have bottomed out. We were downtrending bearish weaker 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 now we're bottoming out and i think we're going to start to crawl eventually it's not going to be from from dead to hot it's going to be like from super dead to less dead to a little bit hot to more hot and more hot do you buy on das or just using swim? how do you manage the bad feels well the bad feels is just what comes with free commissions and you know there's nothing i can do about it i just suck them up and i execute on that Okay, 435. 435, there's some sellers. Okay, 435 is gone. Not even in. Great. Miss BBY as well. Hmm. But you know, this is one of those trades that 
you know, the first big pattern, the first big pattern, the first big consolidation, when we start to go up again, that's another trade that is going to be high volume that I can, that I can trade with bigger size. But this is kind of like spready. Maybe that's why I got chopped up. But right now, I think what I'm thinking, what I think I was thinking at the time was break of 50. Break of 50 here should push us up to 59, 49. Nope. 50, can we break? So I took a small trade there, anticipating the break to 50. It didn't happen. So, you know, small scratch trade. And, you know, buying the dips here for me within a consolidation is so tricky. Wait. N not trading consolidations, pero está listo para trade a line in the sands in la primera consolidation, así como todavía en el open. Because the line the sands, some of the toes are trading, Ross va a estar trading that. Y ahí podemos push big size. Y es como, es como, it, it is kind of like those apex trades that we can be more aggressive on and, and the ones that we should be taking and, and tracking and increasing chances on. No es, no es una de esas trades boasted across the day because I'm small size. I'm sorry for the Spanglish. Um, but again, what I'm saying is not even relevant. Break of 50 and look at that. So, Look at this. This is what I was getting chopped up. So the break of 50, orders are thinning out. Look at the orders. Green, the orders are thinning out. And there's no breakout. Mm. Look at the fa -fa 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 freaking bid opening up. Like there's no tomorrow. So, you know, I'm getting a little chopped out here. But um, what would Ross do? Would Ross be long here? and just hold because he likes the overall pattern so he doesn't get chopped around there not even Ross but what would, what would a trader be doing that holds for longer um and yeah, don't be sorry for speaking your language bro no I'm not sorry for speaking my language I'm just saying I'm sorry that you guys won't understand but thanks um, how long does it take you to, to set up your screen each day with the mix of all those different brokers it takes me zero seconds because these layouts are saved. So I just buy Pinker Swim, Pinker Swim opens how, exactly how it is right now. And then I open DAS and it opens exactly how you see it right now. Also for dips, if it is a flash. Also for dips, it is a flash drops rushing about 20, 30 cents. It's usually a small bounce, but it's hard to catch. Yeah, and the tricky part is, is it's hard to get the good fill at the bottom because as it's flashing down you can buy and you know you think you're buying at the bottom of the dip but but the fill may be like at the mid middle of the dip maybe rust and second chart helps him um taking those decisions to not hold yeah kaius and a lot of good traders in the discord use the 10 second chart you know i at the beginning still i'm not i, I don't think i need them but seeing all these people use them, you know, I'm like, I might give it a try. Do you like Lightspeed better than, than Free Brokers? Right now, I don't, honestly. Commissions are too expensive. Um, if, if it was free commissions, I obviously I would like it. But right now, if, if I had to choose one, I would stick with Ticker Swim. But I want to make DAS, no, Lightspeed an addition. Have you ever considered a signal for 10 second charts? Yes, I have, but it's you know, it's expensive. You know, thinking that I don't need 10 second charts, the thin consume charts are just as good as this signal. So then, if I don't need 10 second charts, why would I pay 200 a month if I can have the exact same thing for free? But now that I need 10 second charts, they might be worth it. Um, I don't know. Or I could use trading view, but I don't know how fast that is. Okay, I see this trade. I don't know for how long this is going to go. But um, this recording is two hours, so buckle up. So, you know, I kind of botched the break of 435, but the next entry is 458. 
And if I have confidence that this thing is going to break, I don't know where I'm going to get that, that confidence from. But if somehow I have confidence that it's going to break, buying in this consolidation shouldn't be a worst idea. 450 again, it's a clear line in the sand. But um, let's see if I try to stab it again. Given that I lost twice on the break of 450, I might hesitate on it here. It's about to come, because I remember. 49, should be longer, 50. Mm. And it's like, okay, should I just give it like a couple of cents to work? Should I get stop out at 45 every time the bits open up? You know, let's say I jump in for a 10 cent with a 10 cent stop. 39 is a stop. Okay, that would have worked better. So, you know, when a stock is too chop inch ready, maybe reducing size and giving, even if I'm jumping in for a breakout, giving it, you know, jumping in with the starter, because I know it's choppy, giving it like a little bit of room, 10 cents, 12, 15 cents. So that it can be chop, so that it can be a little choppy instead of stopping me out. And then once I, once I think that the actual breaker is going to come after chopping around, I can double my position. Weeble has one tick, one second, five seconds, 15 seconds, 30 seconds. Weeble has, has that really? Wow. Trading view offers 10 seconds relatively cheap, about 60 a month. Yeah. Do you like, uh... yeah, if I, if I get one, it's probably going to be trading view. But now Weeble, that's interesting. I didn't know that they had that. And just go on night and into pre-market then trade from there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> into pre-market, yes sir, just check for free. For free? Are you sure? Are they good? Alright, so, you know, that would be that break. And then again, with the small size, I can jump in for the break of 50 for the whole of 50. You know, man, I fucking watched this. Don't go, wait a second. So, you know, when the stock is like this, the way is to reduce size and to give them room. Going for a high day, adding a high day, adding 80. Ooh, hey, hey, hey. Well, that's it. Well, this is the way I should have done it. Okay, I'm confident in the stock. I think this is gonna break. Let me buy small size and give this thing a 10 cent room. All right, I'm going long for the break of 50. Not yet. Okay, I'm long there 49. No, but this time it did work, so that doesn't count. Okay, everything's gonna break here, 450. I'm long 450. Okay, so it's not breaking yet, but I'm confident in the pattern and everything. The stop is gonna be around 4, 440, 442. Whenever we lose the range, ah, uh huh. Whenever, whenever we lose the range that it's consolidating at, just underneath. Hmm. And that's you can probably you can probably see that on the tick chart or on the 10 second chart. Let's investigate. So that was 956. 956, I was right here. Let's make a bubble, specifically right there. There. You know, a tick chart is not a, not, not really a 10 second or 20 second chart. That's kind of like the idea. You know, this chart just records every single tick. Hmm. We need, we need more ticks, more. Is that less ticks or more ticks? So 
so kind of like you know get you go i go long for the pick of 450 it doesn't go right away it pulls back but then it kind of like starts chopping around underneath the range so from 50 to 44 like if we lose 44 then maybe that's my stop but if it not if it doesn't i give it room to chop around a little bit and then once it comes again to 50 i can add if it doesn't go then i stop out like break or bail like the second try it breaks out it breaks out comes back down retest this 50 it holds holds I don't know. So much to learn. So if break 350 happens, you would sell at least half. If you're taking, you know, if you're assuming you're trading big size, 46, are we going to hold or is this a forced breakout? It's holding, it held. You add back 54. Because we held. Now the next little push, we take some out. All right, I would sell half again here. All right, I would add more high day, 79. Beautiful. Micro pullback, the first micro pullback. Long 63. Oh no, Marcelo, that was so late. And even then it was a good trade. Wait a second. The first dip after big push. Watching. Long. Mm, well, yeah, I guess I wasn't that late. It's just that the ass didn't came as slow. This is why buying the bid is good, I think. Or this is that, I don't know. Buying the bid with an offset. And then the break of five is something I shouldn't budged. Let's see if I budged that or not. Do we even get the break of five here? I don't know, I guess we'll see. This is one meter micro pullback. 98, 92, um, long 96. Okay, this is that wiggle room that I should be in, I shouldn't be getting in, out, in, out. It's like, okay, in 96, I really think it's gonna break five. Now, let me give it still a small stop, but a little bit more room to jump around. Oh man. Mm hmm. Okay, fine, sell it all. Wait a second. And then that's a nasty wick. I get back in on the dip and I see zero profits, of course. Yeah, because the dip was not here. I'm buying the dip, but this is not the dip. The dip was 63 and low. Yep. <clears throat> Guys, um, yes, I added like 450, holding for the break of five, and I, and it got me at 79, 80. In hindsight, I should have taken some profit. Yeah, I should have taken some profit and then go again for the break of five. Never got to five, just on my Tinder date. Never got to a win this date. Sad story, but a real story. Give it up for Caius. How long is this thing? Almost an hour? All right, three hours to go. Okay, nasty false break. I'm up. Wow, I'm up 1,400 right here. Mm -mm -mm. And it looks like I gave half back. Uh.
Oh crap. Um I need to go. Okay, I won't go, but I'll be back. Give me one sec. I'm gonna I'm gonna leave this going, but give me one sec. Okay, I'm back. What have I missed? Oh no, you wanna see a tragic story? Look at this. 1,500 on the day. Fantastic day. Wait, am I back? Yeah, I'm back, okay. They don't call him mighty for nothing, it's microscopic and not see. <laughs> Did you notice I'm, that's my when he picked up the phone? He said, my friends just left. <laughs> she said that, but I'm like, I don't care. I'm studying for trade for day trading, duh. All right, let's see that resumption. Man, this is a tragic story right here. So, man, this is a great day right here. So the first 30 minutes, Green, 1.5 think or swim, 300 on light speed. Mm. And then I screw it up by trading B quality setups, by trading, you know, on, on consolidations. Man. Don't trade in consolidations. Lean in, be aggressive, big size on the first push of momentum, the first leg, buying dips, buying, you know, holding for longer. When the stock is pretty tricky, maybe reduce size and Go for the breakouts, yeah, but give it give it more room, kind of like use the stop stop size, stop loss for us we use, and then add as it goes higher because you're gonna have small size and hopefully a better entry. Um, better capitalizing the first move, first legs, first dips, those first like open type apex momentum, bigger size, man, bigger size, and then after the first leg, relaxed, protect profits. Don't get chopped around in consolidation. Wait for stuff to break high, then hold. Hmm. Giga Chad. Well, he said one sec. He can't be that quick. They don't call him money for nothing. It's a microscope. It's a microscope. <laughs> you feel hungry now? It was a quick microscope. In and out. Okay, look at that big loss on BBBY, unnecessarily big. Man, it was so unfortunate. So unfortunate. Right idea, wrong timing by a second, man, by a second. It opens deep at VWAP. Look at this dip. I grab my little balls and I go for the dip. 500 shares on a stock that could flush $2 a share just the way it ripped here. All right, I'm in. 68. I'm in, and I'm gonna let this motherfucker work. 
And then, you know, my stop was the low of this candle, 26.33. And when I saw that this thing was not bouncing, you know, when I started seeing, you know, I'm holding, I'm holding strong. Look at me holding. I'm holding. Hold. Hold. But you know how, see how much time I gave it? I gave it time to bounce, time to bounce, 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 fucking hell, bounce. It was consolidating at the lows, bouncing, consolidating at the lows, bouncing, consolidating at the lows. And once I started seeing the 20s on the bid, I'm like, I was, the moment I saw that, uh, I had to cut it. And guess what that was? The absolute low. It was the low, the low, low. But what am I supposed to do? I think that's the right approach anyway. Buy dips, dial it room that I hold as much as possible. But the low is the low of the can the stop is the low of the candle. And if the perception is not holding up and it breaks the low of the candle, just got it. Got it. And it's algo importante, no tenés que volver a comprar el dip y, y perder otra vez. Y volver a comprar el dip y perder otra vez. Solo como que el primero o el segundo retracement. El primer dip y como que el primer overshoot de ese dip son longs, pero de ahí deja, deja esa mierda. Porque ya puede estar dipping, dipping, dipping en Big Flush. Y ahí es cuando tratamos de cachar el Big Flush es cuando nos pisan. And then, beautiful first one minute candle, make a new high. Um, ¿Cómo se conecta uno contigo? Buen conecte. Um, he's asking in English, how do I connect with someone like you? Well, you are connected. You, you, we are one in this live stream. Just ask questions and I shall answer yeah, you can reach out on Discord as well. Yeah, man, I was up like 1K, then last 600 off the top. Then I stopped trading, started focusing on red to green. <laughs> yeah, and that's that's something that I admire of you, Caius. Recently, you, you've been able to say, you know, I'm done trading. I'm done trading early. It, it could be like midday and you're done trading. And you sit around, see the momentum, and, and even then, don't go back. You're looking at Yeah, I got some questions, my bro. Well, throw them out here. I can answer some right now. Um, then I can answer them later. Yep, Caius knows the secret. Okay. And these are the nice trades. These are the nice trades. Everything else. Man, this crap is long. I don't even know if I want to watch this. You know what I want to watch? Um, I want to watch a f big flush that I got caught on. So... I lost a big chunk on BBBY, and then I lost some right here on ears. I didn't even know it was curling until somebody brought it up to my attention. And um, here it goes. You know, and this is what I have to do. I have to stop trading the big quality setups because, you know, I kind of like, like using the similar share size across the board. and. If on a big quality setup, I'm not comfortable taking three, four thousand shares, then for some reason, I won't be comfortable taking the same share size on the leading gapper that's curling. And if I get rid of the crap setups, the crap, crap stocks, I can always keep my big share size with the obvious leading gapper one. Okay, so ears right here is just curling up. This is a side monitor for me, so I change it up to the main monitor, which is here. And I'm like, all right. Here we go. You know, right now I'm kind of like late to the party. So what I'm eyeing out is the break of um, 317, which is high of day. High of day, the high of the day. And I think I catch it some, you know, maybe. Yeah, I did. Three seventeen. Oh, Marcelo, where's your long? What happened? Come on, bro. Three seventeen. Watch. Marcelo is nowhere to be found. Okay, but the dip that happens. I'm like, okay, over 225 now. Is he gonna hold? It's holding, we're holding. 
why didn't I put there 25? I'm buying now. Kind of late. Still catch a winning trade somehow. Like in this zone, if we are confirming that this is not a false break, this is where I should be the most aggressive. So, you know, I, I screwed up this five day breaker as well. And then on the dip is where I go, okay, time to shine. I buy the dip and I'm going to get flushed on. Uh, no, this is a sad story. But the dip 324. Holding on strong. <clears throat> okay, so that was good. But the dip didn't bounce. I cut it. That was a good one. So that, I'm fine with that trade. Lost 200 bucks. Yeah, okay, whatever. This one is a tough one. And this one, I feel like, okay, I'm buying a support. No, you're not. So kind of like the idea is, what? I got to watch the price action and I got to stop. Honestly, I'm not that mad with that those trades, but, you know, I got to stop just just buying the low, stopping out, buying the low, stopping out. That happens to me a lot when I, when I try to cash a flush. Um, okay. Only attempted it twice. The first quick pullback after a big push. And then the overshoot of that. But then after that, no, it's done. Um, let's see. What's even one what's that even one of your setups? What's that even one of your setups? Which one the dip? Yeah. Do you fly solo or have fly solo or have trading fat partners group? Yeah, I have some par partners, Caius and Red to Green and Ruckling. You know, I don't have partners per se, but I, I am part of the water trading chat room and I'm also part of the relentless trading chat room. And I guess those guys are in my group. You know, primarily just the um, relentless guys because in chat room, I, I, on water trading, I don't even talk. I just use the scanners. I wish I was a better trader where I can trade all day without decision fatigue. But the longer I stay, I tend to give back. You know, I wish I, I could say the same, but I'm, I'm great, so that that's not an issue for me. <laughs> I'm kidding. I wish I could say the same, but yesterday or a couple of days ago, I was looking back at my metrics and I saw that I make money on every hour of the day on my trader view. So I'm like, okay, so, so then should I stop trading? Or like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Or is there an existing video that you can point me to? Can you do a video of how to set up SIM? I have TD, but have level two. Uh, what level two are you using? It would be great if you said a walkthrough and how the best practice in SIM. So the SIM on Tinkerstream is for, unfortunately not that great. So that's probably not a good idea. If you want to use a SIM that's useful, use the DAS one, but that's going to be 150 a month. Or what I did and what you can do is to use um, a cash account and only trade like 10 to 1 shares a day with um, with Tinkerstream Live, live account. If you have a cash account, let's say $4,000, you use $2,000 one day, $2,000 the other, and you just use your cash balance and then just trade with 1 to 10 shares, but kind of like assume that, that those 1 to 10 shares are like 100 to 1,000 shares. So you can kind of like realize what the big numbers are going to look like. Look at this from up 1,000. Absolutely nothing. Mm, yeah. mm -mm -mm. Nope, not good at all. Look, my God. Um. So let's see. Um, so yeah, you do that, and then get E Trade Pro. If you want to trade like me, get E Trade Pro. Put a thousand dollars in the account. And then you're going to get their level two and use their level two to trade because that's the cheapest level two that's useful that you can find because the think swim level two is not very good. Link to relentless. Um, just go to any other of my videos. There should be a, a link in the description. Your exit was 317. 
um, that mighty stamina what's your daily routine uh, what do you do before you stream uh, well nothing because I don't I don't trade well I, I you know when I'm trading in the morning I'm not streaming um, so what I do is I wake up I shower I eat and then I sit here to do my watch list I'm actually eating while I'm doing my watch list um, so you know at that time I'm kind of like half awake half eating so it's fine if I'm not dialed in because I'm just doing my watches. And then by the time the market open comes, I'm usually done eating, ready to go, dialed in. But anyway, that's gonna, I think that's gonna do it, folks. You know, what did we learn? We learned that I gave the entire day, half of the day back, like if it was nothing. We've learned that I can use bigger size in those front side moves. We've learned that, you know, the dips, I don't need to chase them at the low, at the low, at the low. I just need to give them one quick step, the first dip. If it doesn't bounce, you know, I gotta be checking that price section. If I'm seeing stocks that have kind of like spready, choppy movement, but that a quality, kind of like the leading gapper doing a nice pattern early in the morning, I should, you know, have confidence in the stock. Maybe give it like a micro stop in which going for the breakout. Oh, let's give it a sec. It's jumping around. I really feel like it's gonna break. Add for the break on, and you know, um, have a size in which it's less likely for I, for me to get chopped around. And then as the average price goes, as the, as the stock goes higher, add so that, you know, the winner can be significant. Yep. Yeah. Um, thanks for joining. Probably going to be doing this every day. Because study is key. And, you know, the people want to see the live stream. Okay, so. My Discord at is Mighty Stocks. Okay, people, take care. Thanks for joining. Thanks for liking. Until tomorrow. Adios.